Here's why the Jimmy Butler trade to the Miami Heat is a win-win for both teams, and in my opinion, both teams literally get the best player they could have got in the situations that they're in. And if you know me and you know my channel, you know that normally I am pretty harsh. I would say that most of the time it is hard for both teams to end up literally even and both win a trade, but in this scenario, I believe that both teams deserve to get an A plus for this trade. This is why the Jimmy Butler trade to the Miami Heat through the sign and trade deal is the best trade for all parties. Obviously, we're going to talk about the Philadelphia 76ers and of course the Miami Heat, but whoever else gets Goran Dragic is most likely going to need a point guard and he is still a good fit for that team. As of the time I am making this video, the full trade has not gone through because the talks have been renegotiated as Dallas and Miami got a little bit confused. Miami originally thought that they would be sending Goran Dragic to the Dallas Mavericks. Instead, the Dallas Mavericks wanted Kelly Olynyk and Derek Jones, but Miami didn't want to give up Derek Jones for some reason. So obviously that trade did not go through and now Miami is looking for a suitor for Goran Dragic. We know that the Miami Heat will send Goran Dragic somewhere, but as of now, we don't know which team that is. But the principle of the trade is here, as Jimmy Butler will land on Miami and Josh Richardson will land on the Philadelphia 76ers. If you guys remember, two days ago, I posted my bold predictions video. In my bold predictions video, I stated, if one of them happens, I would take that. Five bold predictions. Five bold predictions of the 2019 NBA free agency. Number three, Jimmy Butler to the Miami Heat. Obviously with my actual predictions for the NBA free agency, I wanted to get all of them right. Obviously it's incredibly hard, but on the first day of free agency, I thought I did okay. There was a few that I was unexpected, especially D'Angelo Russell to the Golden State Warriors. I didn't expect Al Horford to sign with the 76ers, but for majority of them, I was happy. In saying that, Jimmy Butler to the Miami Heat. How it is a win-win for both teams, let's break that down in this video. If you guys enjoyed the videos, I've tried to get three up. The Jimmy Butler one, the D'Angelo Russell one, and the Brooklyn Nets one with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. So if you guys are enjoying them, be sure to leave a like as that supports the channel. And if you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Without further ado, let's get into it. First of all, let's look at the Philadelphia 76ers. After starting off this free agency, losing a pretty core piece to their roster in JJ Redick, they needed to go after a shooting guard. They managed to re-sign Tobias Harris, so that locked up Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris, and Joel Embiid as a core three. But with losing JJ Redick, I don't think you could pick a better guy than a guy like Josh Richardson. Obviously, he's a Heat fan. I got to watch a lot of Jay Rich. I saw him develop from a second round pick to a guy that played behind Dwayne Wade, learned from Dwayne Wade, was one of the best defensive guys in the league. But not only that, he added to his offensive game this season and he started to steadily improve his offensive game. He didn't obviously come into the league as someone that was tainted a potential all-star, but with his time in Miami, he slowly risen up and showed that he has all-star potential talent. Now, after the 76ers lost JJ Redick, a guy guy that is one of the best shooters, this guy is not bad. Of course, JJ Redick and Josh Richardson are quite different as JJ Redick is a much better shooter, but Josh Richardson is a much better defender. So if I'm the Philadelphia 76ers, I would almost take Josh Richardson over JJ Redick and this is why. Number one, Josh Richardson is a far better defender than JJ Redick and that was something that teams would actually abuse when they faced the 76ers. Teams would just ISO on JJ Redick. The second thing is the age. Obviously, JJ Redick is quite a bit older than Josh Richardson. Josh Richardson is 10 years younger than JJ Redick, as JJ Redick is 35 years old and Josh Richardson is 25. The third thing is the contract. Josh Richardson was already under contract, and for two more years, you're paying Jay Rich $11 million a season with a player option for $11.6 million in 2021. He is the ideal 3 and D player for any championship contender, as he isn't a star player. He'll play his role, he'll hit the shot when he's open, and he will lock down on defense. He is the perfect guy for the Philadelphia 76ers, considering they lost JJ Redick. Obviously, with the 76ers, you have your offensive threats. Tobias Harris and Joel Embiid. Then you add in Al Horford in free agency, which is a really good player to have alongside Joel Embiid and may really open up the floor for not only Embiid, but of course for Ben Simmons, who likes to attack the paint and obviously he cannot shoot. If the Philadelphia 76ers want to fully be an NBA championship contender, Simmons needs to improve on his jump shot even just a little bit. If he can hit the mid-range shot, it is game over because now everybody on the floor can shoot and that includes Al Horford. 
Not to mention, with this core of Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris, Josh Richardson, and Joel Embiid, that is a core that will last for a few years, and they're all reasonably young. They all have time to develop and reach their full potential. When you think about it, the average age for a guy to reach their peak is at 27 to 32 years old. Simmons and Embiid are really, really young, and then Jay Rich and Tobias Harris are just entering their prime years. So now it becomes really interesting, and the Philadelphia 76ers have pushed themselves not only to eat in conference contenders but NBA finals contenders and they definitely have a chance to win the championship next season. The fit is a lot better than Jimmy Butler and Tobias Harris and from losing JJ Redick you couldn't find a better fit. Okay so that's the Philadelphia 76ers done so let's talk about the Miami Heat. If you know the Miami Heat you know that Pat Riley is a guy that wants NBA star level talent. This is a guy that always trades for his talent. In my bold predictions video, I stated clearly how I thought that Jimmy Butler was going to play in Miami and why I thought he was going to play in Miami against any other team besides the Lakers. Because they have a max slot and he would fit in right there. But in the end, Jimmy Butler wanted to play in Miami and Miami is the perfect culture. The reason why Jimmy Butler didn't like Minnesota is because he didn't think his teammates work hard enough. If you know the Miami Heat, you know that they have a culture of working hard. That is what they do. They're in Miami, so that's a destination city for future free agents. They have another max spot in 2020 when Hassan Whiteside and Goran Dragic come off the books. Which means that Jimmy Butler knows he could have a star level talent next to him as soon as next season. But even if Miami strikes out in 2020 and doesn't get any free agent, the Miami Heat still have a decent core. Justice Winslow, Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero, Hassan Whiteside. These are guys that can definitely produce alongside Jimmy Butler. And Miami wants that star player. They have been desperate for star power ever since LeBron James left in 2014. Pat Riley is the guy that gets all-star level talent to this team. Tim Hardaway, Alonzo Mourning, Shaq, Chris Bosh, LeBron James. He is the guy that goes after big name players and lands them when he can. On the one hand, you lose Jay Rich, but on the second hand, you gain what Jay Rich does, but an even better player and a guy that other players entering free agency will actually want to play with. He's a proven all-star and a proven man that can lead this team. The second thing was the Miami Heat were able to sign Jimmy Butler to a four year max as opposed to a five year max, which is actually quite good because four years is enough time for Miami to build around Jimmy Butler and get another star piece. But if it was five years, that is quite a long time for a guy who is reaching 30 at the start of this season. So if Riley hopes to build a true contender, he actually has the chance to do that, but he has to do it in the next four years. And because the Miami Heat have already built up a young core of Justice Winslow, Bam Adebayo, and now we just drafted Tyler Hero, it allows the Miami Heat to use those players as trade assets as well if we don't even want to get somebody in free agency or we just want to get somebody in free agency and get an all-star level player during the trade deadline or during the season or see how Winslow and Bam Adebayo end up playing and if they are good enough, compete in the Eastern Conference because as we all know, the Eastern Conference is up and down at some stages. Yes, the Brooklyn Nets have improved, but they don't have Kevin Durant. Yes, the 76ers have improved, but obviously we don't know how they're going to play until they actually play together and yes we also know that the Bucks are still the Bucks. if the Raptors lose Kawhi Leonard then that leaves them in a sticky situation so as a whole the Miami Heat could be in a strong position to do well in the Eastern Conference whether they land Jimmy Butler a second star or not they are still in a great position because they have the trade assets they have Pat Riley and they have a max spot in the summer of 2020 and Jimmy Butler is still an all-star level talent to join the Miami Heat and lead them as he wants to do. Jimmy Butler has stated he wants to be a leader on a team, and in my opinion, the Miami Heat is the best team for him. The one thing that the Miami Heat lacked is the guy that can take the final shot at the end of games. Jimmy Butler fits that mold perfectly. He showed it in Chicago, in Minnesota, and of course with the Philadelphia 76ers, and that is three teams in three years. Now he finally is able to settle down, be the leader, take the clutch shots, and win the games for the Miami Heat. And that's all the Miami Heat needed. So with that said, let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think that the Miami Heat got a steal with Jimmy Butler? Do you think it was a fair trade for both teams? I don't think anybody lost. In fact, I think both teams won. So shout out to both teams. And let's see how the Miami Heat go with their new superstar in Jimmy Butler. With that said, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, follow me on Instagram, hit the notification button, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. I'm out. Peace.